So I'm going to hopefully sell you on why it's fun to be a photographer, okay? So we're going to overview why it's fun to be a photographer, what's the work you can do being a photographer, so that's the kind of career part of thing. Dia's gonna cover that. Um, a couple of just like two or three things on how to take better photos, although you guys are already taking great photos. Um, I'm going to give you an assignment. If you think I really love, you don't have to do it, but if you're like, oh, I really love photography, I wanna do something with it, here's a couple of things you could do, okay? Um, and then um, we'll have some times for any questions you have or you wanna just chat before we wrap up and I'll show you what the camera equipment looks like. Um, maybe we'll do a quick group photo, that would be fun. Do you ever go to something like at a theater or a museum and there's like a line and it's like nobody can go past that line? Or when you go and see a show somewhere and they're like, no photography is allowed at this show, right? Photographers, we are people who cross the line, which to a certain personality type is actually kind of appealing. Um, and the things that you're not allowed to do, we get paid to do. So we actually get paid to go to a theater show and take pictures of it where other people are told you're not allowed to do it. And that's like kind of cool, right? Um, you also get to meet interesting people and learn about them because if you can take a nice photo of somebody and share it with them, whether it's a new friend or somebody that is, um, if you're doing it for work, somebody that's important, it's like a really interesting thing that you've done. You've got something you can kind of share with them. Do you ever think it would be like cool to meet the President of the United States, see what he's like when he's just hanging out? Not when he's standing in front of a podium, you know, being all official, but when he's just like hanging out with people? She's done that. Okay, before she was like 22 years old, she, Mr. Biden was like, hey, I'm gonna get a picture with you. You know, that's kind of cool, right? Just because we were there doing photos and you get to see what interesting people do. You know, it's so neat. So it gives you access to something that you just never would do otherwise. I'm from like a really small town. I'm from outside of a really small town. We had like this little gas station, like something you'd see in an old black and white TV show or something. And so it's just been so cool to be able to meet people, see what they're like, um, go to the Hamilton cast party and take photos. Um, it's, it's a good time. We do a lot of theater. So if you like theater, musicals, things like that, um, you'll see some photos of those that we do. Um, Dia's done a lot of concerts. She's really into that. Um, okay, so that's the why. Hey there, come on, join in. You haven't missed much. <laughs> um, why it's good to be able to take photos, I think you probably already know, right? Is there anything worse than somebody who you thought they took a nice photo of you and your friends and it's like not good or somebody blinked, right? I mean, yeah, right? My mom used to like chop people's heads off of in photo. I mean, not in real life, right? But just she'd take a picture and their heads wouldn't be in the photo, you know? So taking a good photo is something you could really do to give people. It could be a gift. It could literally be a gift. Dia will talk about it. Okay. What's that? Uh, took a bad photo? Yeah, she kept taking blurry photos. Yeah. Oh, photos oh, totally. Oh, yeah, totally. We've all done it. And you'll see something that I'm going to talk about in a minute that will help with that, okay? So this is kind of what it might be like if we're taking a big photo. Um, the guy in the middle there is, uh, he made all the dancing in Lion King. That's his job. And so these are some of the dancers that he works with. And we put up big lights and camera equipment and things. And it's, a, it's really an interesting thing to do. Maybe you get to do something really different like surgery. It's really amazing being in an operating room. Maybe you're into science or something and you think, wow, I may not want to be a doctor, but you can like sample and learn from things like that. Plus, we do a lot of theater things. So these are all backstage passes. So you find out the, some of the favorite things, bless you, some of the favorite things you might want to do or see. When you're a photographer, you actually can get paid to go do them, which is pretty amazing. We are, we're Deepak's photographers and we're Playmakers photographers. Um, so that's the kind of stuff uh, that we do for theater. We also do some of the big concert things at Live Nation. I've already told you, you get to meet famous people, you get to be involved in things like uh, Hamilton. So this is 
what do photographers do for a living? So this is kind of career things in case you were interested in that. Yes. So as you may have noticed, my dad is a photographer full time. That's his job. He works for himself. Um, I have worked for myself and been self-employed, but most of the time I've worked for somebody else. And what's interesting is that my job title is not always just photographer. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about all the many places you can use these kinds of creative skills and get to be around interesting people and do cool things that you're interested in as a creative. I'm going to try and go through them really quickly because I realized as I was making this list that I've had a lot of jobs and I don't want to bore you, so I'm going to do my best. Um, oh, and this, ooh, the photo before this was my friend's dog. You'll get to admire it in just a sec. Hold your thought for just one second for me. Do you want me to so, go back? Yes, everybody admire my friend's dog. Isn't Kirby beautiful? You took a picture of Kirby? Oh, It's actually a Boston Terrier. I took a picture. Ta-da! I took a picture of me and my dog. Good job. Oh, I love that. Oh, that's such a good photo. He looks like he's smiling. Oh, I love that. Are you taking a picture? Are you taking a picture? Ready? Oh, that's so good. Dog photos are always welcome here. Um, I think I hit space. Perfect. Just like that. All right. So sometimes I'm sadly not taking pictures of dogs. So what are the other things I take pictures of? One of the first jobs I ever had, and this was where my job title was truly photographer. All I did was photography, was for the town of Benson, North Carolina. If Has anyone been to Benson, North Carolina? A few nods. Okay. It's pretty far in the middle of nowhere, but they do some really fun things. So when I was the event photographer, I got to go to all their fun events. This was a 4th of July party. There was a cool band. People were dancing. There was food, which I got for free. And I also loved, so you may not be able to tell listening to me right now, but I'm a very big introvert. So if you're an introvert, you know that sometimes it can be a bit hard to like get out of your shell, to talk to people. Um, to make friends, to be at events, it can be kind of hard and I have a lot of social anxiety that I have to work with when I'm there. But I found, especially when I was working at this job, if I had a camera, I felt like I had a purpose and a reason to be there. So I was able to strike up conversations with people. I was able to make friends at the events. I was able to really enjoy them in a different way because I felt like I had a purpose in that situation. Then this photo over here of this lovely gentleman is from when I was the photographer. Well, I actually technically wasn't a photographer. I was the designer for my university's um, newspaper, the Campbell Times. And when I was at the Campbell Times, um, they just really needed somebody to fill in in different places because we didn't have a lot of photographers. So because I had this skill, even though my job title was not photographer, I got to get front row passes to the campus concert to take photos like this, but also to see a concert in front and center, which is my favorite thing to do. Did I have everything else I wanted to tell you about that? Oh yeah, and when you're able to have a bunch of different skills, so even if you enjoy photography, but you don't want to do photography full time or have that be the only thing you work on, it can be something that really helps you wherever you go, whether that's in your personal life or in a job like this one. I was able to get more leadership roles in this newspaper because I had a skill that not many other people had, and that was something that the leadership team really appreciated. So, uh, oh yeah, the next two, I forgot to get photos of these, and I'll cover them very quickly. Um, so speaking of photographer not being your only job title, I worked in a field called public relations, which basically means I made people look good to other people, and I worked in a field of communications, which basically means I talked about things to other people. Um, both of those, one was at the North Carolina Department of Agriculture, so a lot of things about cabbages and uh, field days and fun stuff like that, and the other one was at Duke Health. So I'm very interested in agriculture and farming. I'm terrible at it. I can't even keep a succulent alive half of the time. And then I'm really interested in healthcare and medicine and the things that doctors do. And I'm really not good at science at all. So because I had creative talents, I was able to be around really cool people and things I was interested in without necessarily being a doctor or a scientist or a farmer. Then the next one, oh, did I get myself mixed up? No. Uh, that's where it is. I got my order mixed up. Oh, that's okay. This is um, when I worked for Kids Notes, which is a really cool music nonprofit if they're not at your school. 
Um, and again, I worked in communications for them, which means I did a lot more of the social media and writing emails and things like that. But when they needed a photographer, I got to step in, which means I got to go to this really cool concert in this beautiful building and hear these super talented students perform, which I wouldn't have gotten to do otherwise. Then the next one, these are a few more jobs. Did I miss this? No, I didn't. Sorry, I'm losing track of my notes. All right, so then this is the Carolina Theater in downtown. You may have been there. I did. Yes, they're one of my favorite places. I'm obsessed with them. Huh? I don't think I've been there. Okay. They also have movies and things. No way! Oh, that's so fun. I love it when they do that. Nice. That's a great picture of me. Thank you. I've actually been taking pictures of you the whole time. Well, thank you. You're a very good photographer. I love your pop socket. That's a beautiful dog. The funny thing is, is that I, me, my whole family took photos even though we weren't allowed to turn on our phones. <laughs> oh no! I put That's, you in space. Well, like, so everybody see. Everybody did anyway. Yeah. Like, everybody. It was a graduation. Yeah. So this hard to it's a beautiful dog. All right, let's All right. hear because this is really interesting. I only have a few more things I'm going to tell you, I promise. So, actually, both of these photos are photos that I took for social media. So, both of these job titles, this one at the Carolina Theater, most of my job was managing their Instagram and their Twitter, and I know we were still on Facebook. Um, <laughs> so this is one of the photos that I took for their Instagram, and it got all over the website, it was super fun, and that was a way that I used photography and my phone for my job. Um, now I'm working at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, or MIT. Um, if you haven't bumped into MIT before, we are I will say the best worldwide. We go up and down in the rankings depending on the year, but for science, for math, for technology, and especially for engineering, but there's also artists here and I am one of them. Um, and this I think is a really great example of how those interests that I have, so I love technology, I love coding, I love computers, I love science, and I love the idea of math. I'm just not naturally good at any of these things at all. So while I won't ever be a mathematician, I get to go to work at a place where people are doing cool, groundbreaking, earth-shattering things, and I get to be surrounded by that every day and be excited to come to work every day and do something that I love because I have these more creative gifts. Uh, did I miss anything? Yes. And that was everything I wanted to say there, but I have a few more fun things to show. So obviously you can do photography for your job, but when you have those skills, it also impacts those photos that you take of the things around you. So first of all, I'm the designated photographer in my friend group. So anytime we go on a cool trip or something, I'm the one taking photos and I actually love it. It's not a problem. And what I love about it is that I get to take photos where people feel confident, where they feel cool, where they feel like their best version of themselves, and that's a gift that I'm giving to these people that I love in my life. And it has helped me connect with other people that I wouldn't have gotten to be friends with if not for this creative skill. Um, and it also means that I get to capture fun memories, like this incredible ice cream I got at Milk Lab, and also, that looks right? Delicious. Doesn't it look good? And look at my friend's cool nails. Elizabeth's nails were just fantastic that day, and so I got to capture her beautiful nails and also this delicious ice cream that we have, and I get to remember this forever. All right, I'm going to switch. Put that away for now. <laughs> and then two other things. So I love flowers. I think they're gorgeous, doesn't everybody? So I got to capture this memory of a walk that I totally would have missed these beautiful flowers on this random tree behind a random building. But because I'm used to photography, I noticed something gorgeous that I got to celebrate for life now. And when I went to Dua Lipa, I don't know if everybody is a Dua Lipa person, but I am. We love some Dua Lipa. That's okay, we'll get him later, but thank you for catching that. Yeah, I'm just hoping that he'll leave of his own accord. So when I got to go to a concert that I loved, I got this really cool photo that I'm going to get to treasure forever and print out and put on my wall. And remember, it also looks super cool. In fact, I think that's part of the badge is you can do crafts with photography. Yeah. So right like that. I love doing that. Like and do one of those little things where you hang photos in your room on a string. Mm -hmm. yeah, I used to have that in my dorm room. Yep. And the last thing I wanted to share is that when you know photography, you get to have these artistic and beautiful photos of pets all over your phone and your walls and your friend's phone. This is my mom's lock screen right now and probably forever. And this was um, 
My friend's mom loved this photo of their dog. So those are the many wonderful things you can have with photography. Yeah. So this is just taking better photos with any camera. And I've talked about that for years because it really bugs me that people see my camera. And you know what they say to me when they see my camera? Wish I had that camera so I could take better pictures. Exactly. Yeah. They say, well, yeah, of course your photos are good. You have a good camera, right? But I mean, I started like all of you guys with like a really cheap, little thing your phones are better than my first camera so it has nothing to do with the camera at all and I want to encourage people take better photos with any camera by the way that's Dia at DPAC this is a real Tony Award if you're into musicals you're into theater that's actually a real live award that they give someone and she was taking photos of people that were holding that okay why is this an interesting photo anybody have an idea raise your hand yes what's that Ah, you like that it's kind of that black and white, not just kind of boring color. Yeah, what do you think? Maybe it's because it's a still light and it's got a filter and it's because it's What was the first thing you said? Still? Still light. Mm-hmm. Just because it's like frozen a moment in time? Yep. Is there something that's kind of funny almost? Um, the dude that's... Ah, what do you think? Yeah. And there's two sides, so there's two sides on the same side. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this. And this, and where did this arrow point to? Okay, and he's kind of like, kind of looks almost like a walking guy. I like things that are funny. I like stopping the world and doing that. Photography can give you a chance when you're just walking around to do that, okay? How about this? Why would somebody think this photo is funny? Raise your hand if you do. Let me see. Anybody who hasn't gone yet? I'm sorry, I, I, I will, but come on. What do you think? Huh? You know, I don't think she can read it. it okay. Says, Friendly groceries, no loitering, littering, alcoholic beverages on premises, no bikes, no skateboards, and a bunch of other things. Okay, let's hear what do you think. Grow. Oh yeah, isn't that like really classy, right? Don't you think this looks like a classy place, <laughs> right? And if it's the friendly grocery store, what's all what's going on over Jason here? Said no bikes and no skateboards. Yeah, there's pretty much nothing you could do there, right? If you have a bike, <laughs> they don't want you, right? Yeah. Is it friendly? No. Does it look friendly? No. I think that's funny. It looks kind of sketchy. Yeah, it looks yeah. way sketchy, exactly. <laughs> all right, so Here's the thing that you can use with any camera. Everybody talks about, right, like you're taking pictures. Okay, I'm taking a picture. We call it making pictures because taking pictures is like exactly what happens, you do a snapshot. Making a picture is thinking about like, is there a limb sticking out of her head if I take a picture right now? Is there something kind of ugly that the light is kind of weird or something? Is somebody blinking? Is there something? So think about how can I make a picture by doing something different? And that's really kind of simple. Can you think of any way if we were going to take a picture of Dia and there was a big ugly sign or limb here, what could we do to make a picture, not just take it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you could actually kind of like Photoshop something. And what were you going to say? You can put a hat on it. You could put like a hat to kind of block it, right? Yeah. You could blur it out. You could blur it out. Yeah. What else? You could turn it, um, you could turn the limb into something funny like, and yeah. you could put an elephant on it. You could do a lot of things like that. How about this? What if you just said, hey, Dia, there's something behind your head that makes you look stupid and move a little bit, right? So you could move, the person could move, you could do something creative to soften it or disguise it or whatever. Think about making photos, getting interesting angles. If you look at the world from down here, or you're taking a picture of kids and you're taking pictures from their level, or if you're taking pictures from way above, that could be a lot more interesting if you stood on this and took a picture than just straight on, okay? So you're gonna learn to make photos. The second thing I want to teach you is to get closer to things, okay? Um, most people doing photos, they're standing back unless you're doing a selfie, right? So get closer, really challenge yourself. When I say to you, a picture of a kid on a swing, you probably don't think that close that he's almost kicking the camera, right? That's not what's in your head. What's in your head is like, oh, it's like a swing set 
and there's other kids and there's all this going on. But what's interesting is a little kid and some joy and a boot. And that was taken just with a little snapshot camera, you know. So get closer and decide what's the picture here. Like this might be the picture here or this might be the picture here, or maybe just how she's holding her hands and the mask might be like, okay, COVID, right? Um, you wanna get in and figure out what your picture's about and then take it. So think about things ahead of time, okay? This is the last of the official tips, <clears throat> excuse me. Take three, take 300. So people are better about this than they used to be because way back, when I was your age, there was film. Do you know like hipsters like yeah. film and yeah. film cameras? Yeah, exactly. And you could take 36 pictures at once and then you would send it away for a week and get paper prints back. 36 pictures, you know, right? So now on your phone, you're just like snap, 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 snap and having fun. So remember when you're doing a photo of something you care about, take more than one photo, take three photos. On average, if you do three photos and you're taking photos of a friend, you're not gonna get them blinking if you do three of them. If you do three photos and you kind of look at one in between, you'll probably notice that there's some big ugly thing sticking out of their head or an ant crawling on them or something like that, right? So take three photos of things anytime it's a photo you like care at all about. Okay, you have a better chance of getting a real one. The other thing I tell people to do is when you're on your third photo, then do something different. So I've taken, Two photos of you sitting here, right? Maybe I'm gonna go like, hey, look up. Hey, I'm gonna go really low. Hey, wave at me, okay? So you're trying to, yeah, do something different with the third photo. So take three. Any idea what take 300 would be? It's like a small film, like you can scroll through it sure. and then it's like people go like Yeah. Or like if you draw something and, mm -hmm. and like one of those flip books, kind of yeah, like that. That's cool. Because when you take a lot of photos, they actually can become a movie. So that's something creative you can do with them. And when you have 300 photos, you've got a lot of choices, okay? So maybe there's something you really think is cool. You're going to a friend's party and you're like, I'm gonna take really nice photos and give it to them as a gift for their birthday. If you don't just say, I took six photos of friends, but you took like, a hundred photos, you could probably find 20 really amazing photos to give that person, right? So get used to taking a whole lot of photos, a whole lot of bad photos. If you look at this here, and I know it's hard to tell, like this one's too dark and this one, my camera just like accidentally went off. Look at this expression on this one here. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell, but she's like, ah. Oh. And then I started to get into something happening here that looked good. On the last ones, I told them the way, this is a Duke Law graduation this year. Um, How many so do that. did you think you, you took over? On an average that's, that's, event, you I, wanna take a guess? Okay. guess? You took 30. Okay, uh, well, and for, for a whole event, like a graduation, do anybody wanna just take a wild guess? How many photos? Maybe. Yeah, how many? A hundred or how many hundred? Yeah. How about more than that? How about a lot more than that? Five, What's more than a hundred? Okay. How about more than a thousand? A billion. <laughs> uh, Sometimes it feels like a billion. Uh, I'll get to you too. Yeah. What do you think? Thirty. Okay. So in this area, I did thirty. What do you think? Um, I'm thinking you did three hundred. <laughs> well, you know what? At this part of the event where people were hanging out, I probably did 300. For the three hours I was there, we shot uh, about almost 3,000 photos. So yeah. guys, at the end, yeah. he sends us like yeah. the set of the, the good mm -hmm. photos. It was around 130, yeah. maybe? What, what we always figure, thousand. yeah, what we figure is we're lucky if one out of 10 photos is worth giving to somebody. Yeah. But those are really they good photos. Really those are really good they photos. And you know what? It doesn't cost you anything to take more pictures. So you just take more. So if it's something you care about, shoot a whole bunch. Shoot 30 of what's happening. Shoot 300 at the whole event. You'll get more good photos. And we're right on time. This, yeah. So this is, and I'll send this to your leaders that they can share if you need for the things. You're going to have in your book um, assignments you can do to get your badge. But these are some things if you say, I kind of like photography. Summer's coming up. 
I'm gonna do some photo thing. These are a couple ideas you can consider. The first one's really easy. Slow down somewhere where you have to wait and you're bored and instead of like having fun on your phone, just stop and watch people. Watch, look at this, people, what they're doing, the cart, what the little kid's gonna be doing. Think about well, what might happen next as I'm watching it going on, you know? Um, she's actually using um, sign language, okay? That's, that's great, that's exciting. So you start to tune in on what people are doing around you and what they might do next and what's interesting about people because people are really cool. So just take 10 minutes sometime when you have to be somewhere that you're bored, people watch, 10 minutes. Think about what might happen next and what might be interesting. The next thing. Cameras, your, the problem with the phones being so good is it'll do everything for you. So try to find a way to either have an app on your phone that you can have some control. You, most of them you can tap to focus and you can lighten and darken a little bit. But usually for nine or ten dollars, if your folks are like want you to have a hobby this summer, you could get an app that lets you set all kind of stuff and do more filters than you could do in Instagram. Yeah. Yeah. She takes pictures of lights that are out. Yeah. So that I kind of like that. That's cool. And what takes pictures of what? Uh, lights that are out. Really? Like physically, like a bulb that is out. Yeah. That's a riot. That's for her job. That's so cool. And then, like you guys, already have a camera. You can start setting things. So, cameras like these, usually you can do a little bit more to set. Your phone, you could get an app. Or the next thing, and is. They make little cameras and it doesn't this, uh, they make little cameras like this mm -hmm. that you can set. But here's how you know you can change things. Do you see like there are numbers and dials you can change. And why that's nice is if you really wanna learn photography, you can change something and look on the back and see what changed, okay? Let me just do the last couple things on assignment and then we'll chat, okay? And we have uh, 15 minutes to chat. Take three, take 300. So actually think to yourself, the next thing I'm going to, I'm going to make sure I take three photos of each thing I care about. And the third one, do something completely different. Go up, go down, have the person do something, okay? Have the person jump up in the air for the third one. You'll start to get more interesting photos and you'll find out what you like, okay? Um, do something where you say, you know what, today, I'm going to get close and get closer. I'm going to just go out for half an hour with my phone and my pet or something in the yard or a best friend, or if you're doing some sort of a jamboree or an event, I'm going to take photo of this and then I'm going to get closer and then even closer yet. See how close you can get until your photos get blurry and start to teach yourself what's the real picture, okay? Um, last two things you could possibly do is portraits. We didn't talk much about this, but a whole bunch of photography is of people, right? Okay, so when you take a photo of a person, we call that a portrait, right? Right, you do it yourself, you're doing a selfie, okay? If you take a portrait of somebody else, it's called a portrait, and you could do that of somebody that matters to you, you, like a grandma or an aunt or something like that. You could do that of a pet. You can do pet portraits. There's lots of things you could do. So you could do a portrait of someone or something that really matters to you. What about gathering your favorite hobby stuff together? You're into horses, gather it all together, do photos of all that stuff, okay? Last one is learning about photographers. The best way to learn about it is Look at what other people did and then think about how could I do some of that stuff. And I'll send you guys a couple of links you could do. Yeah, okay? Great. So I think, yep, that's about it. Um, we have our Instagram handles I'll send you guys. Great. So any, any questions? Um, yes. I actually, I just remembered a type of style of photography. Yeah. So it's, I call it photography. Uh-huh. So on a beach and you want to pretend that you're next to a big statue of a plane. Yeah. So you get a little plane tool, you put it really close to the camera and then you go far away mm -hmm. from it to make the, to make the plane look big and you really That's little. so and fun. In the old days before computer stuff, they used to do that for monster movies. 
they would have like the monster really close to the camera and things.